Good morning. How you doing? Fine. I thought you was going to talk about the relationships this morning. No, I was supposed to do that tonight, last night. We can talk about it. Let's start it off. What do you want to talk about? I know whatever they want to talk about, whatever questions they have, I can answer them real quick. Well, we the relationship part started because crazy Chris, you know the the guy in the jail and all that. So we were touching on that about how guys be misleading women in prison and all that. But I mean, we can talk about anything from how the men leave the children on the women, and we can talk about how people always saying, "Where's mom?" They never say, "Where's the dad?" Understand why? Why don't the men get the same attention, the same pressure as the women? Like, why is it always, "Where's his mom?" I'm gonna call your mom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, sometimes, and this is from experience from when I be listening to other people calling me and asking me for my opinion. Um, some women, they get mad when they're not no longer with the father no more and they be jealous because the men done moved on to someone else. Then they want to use the child as revenge to not let them see their child because they can't be with the father no more. And I think that's totally unfair. Um, when me and my son father broke up, when my son was two, I never did that to my son. And I never did that to his father because he wanted to be with somebody else or whatever he wanted to do. I just think that mothers should um, at least let them see their children instead of using their children as a pawn to see the, the actual father because they want to be with them. Yeah, that's what they do. Now, you know, I talk about that all the time, like why? Um, the moms get bitter and don't let the father see mm. the, um, and, you know, and, and it's vice versa too. Like I tell the men, just because the women don't want to be with you no more, right? That don't mean you don't got to take care of your kids. I understand what I mean? You got a lot of men and the women break up. It's like, oh, fuck you, fuck the kids. No, they're your kids, dog, at the end of the day. So it, it, it go both ways. And I definitely understand what you're saying. We got, we, we got to get better with that. Right, right. And then not only that, um, as parents, um, how can I word this right? The father and the mother and the mother and the father, right. vice versa, right. they should come together and say, listen, this is what we need to do to be a good co-parenting, to have co-parenting for our children, no matter what our lives may lead to. So I just wish that both sides, the mother and the father, develop a co-parenting skill regardless of whoever they decide to go and be with yeah i think a lot of it stem from like at the end of the day a lot of parents they they, they didn't have the right parents in their life like at the end of the day mm -hmm. so you see a lot of people right now like their father wasn't in their life their mom probably was just out here throwing crazy stuff like most of us grew up like that so they don't know how to be a mother a lot of people don't know how to be a father and it's crazy like you lay down with somebody especially these teenagers these teenagers out here having sex Next thing you know, you got a 15-year-old girl who's pregnant by a 16, 17-year-old, 15-year-old boy. And their parents are like, well, I, I don't even know how to raise you. How the hell am I going to raise you and another kid? And that's that's a big problem in our communities. Right, right. And then not only that, um, a lot of things that um, I don't also approve of is sometimes it's vice versa. It don't necessarily always have to be the mother, but usually when people call me for advice, the, the mother may say, well, the dad don't want to be in his life. Well, find a way to have this child be at least a part of his family, and maybe his family will take into consideration and talk to the, love, the, the child's father and say, listen, this is your child. Your child is missing out on the father's life, or, you know, you're missing out like we all need to be a family and um you know be together you got me child i said you got me child proof like me but that's um yeah i, I ain't listen that's the first know. time i heard somebody touch on that part where even even if he don't want to get involved get his family involved you're right about that yeah. a lot of people I never heard nobody even say that. Like, all right, you don't want to be involved. I'm going to get your mom involved. I'm going to get your sister involved. I'm going to get your mm -hmm. brother involved because they still related to him. That's mm -hmm. a good, good point. That's definitely a good point. Yeah. And, you know, and that's the same thing as far as the mother's family because sometimes lately um, some parents, <laughs> either the mother or the father, they either strung out on these drugs or they strung out on weed, crack, or whatever. So to fill that hole, that mold in their child's life, um, yes, I do carry for the babies all the time. I'm gonna always be a, a full-time grandma, um, and I always been. Um, 
I don't play that part time being a family member. I just don't. Right. Um, I don't agree to because um, say like for instance, if my son was still here and he gets into an argument with Najima, he decides he don't want to be with Najima no more. That's not me. I'm still a grandmother and I'm still going to be there for my grandkids. And that's the same as for my son's father's side of the family. He would do the same thing. He would still be there for the kids. Just because the parents have a disagreement, the family should still try to be there for the kids and, right. you know, at least try to bring them back together. Because I'm going to tell you, you know, my son and my daughter-in-law, they both had arguments but that's a part of a relationship. Right. That's a part of a marriage. Right. You're going to come back together. You can fix it if you're grown. And that's something I told my son when he said that he really liked Najima and he really loved um, loved um, her. I said to him, "Is nobody else coming in my door? Like I don't want to see nobody else if this is how you feel about her." And then when he had the when they had my first grandson, I said to him, "You better be there for your son." So it's all the enforced when it starts off with the parents themselves, because I'm going to tell you something, I really didn't have my parents either, but my parents did the best that they could. So right. you have to break the cycle. Yes. You can't just let this cycle keep going on and on and on and on and on. Oh, well, because my parents wasn't there, right. I'm not going right. to be there for my kids or vice versa. I'm not going to do that. And I don't encourage no one to do that. I want everybody to sit, stand up. They need to get the themselves together and they need to come to some type of reality i get your point um but i don't get your point leah some family takes the responsibility of, well yeah i get it takes the responsibility of a dead yeah, some families do I, stuff do, up. I do i see that a lot and i do hear that a lot but what about the mother yeah. like the mother they sit back and they they say oh well, i don't know where your dad is yes you do because yes. you had sex with this man for how long? Even if it's a one night stand, I'm quite sure you know where this man is at. You laid down and slept with him. Yep. And the same as the guy. They the same way. They done said back they done laid down with this woman. They done created this child. And let me turn this thing off. And now you created a child, an innocent human being that doesn't know anything except for their parents. Yeah. And it's, I feel as though because the child comes from the mother, because we the one that gotta keep, we, we the one that carries the child, we the one that births the child, we should be the ones to say, this is your father. At least take a picture of them, sneak a picture, y'all quick to sneak and uh, go in their phones and look at their text right. messages. Right. Be quick enough and, and fast enough to sneak and take a picture of them so you can show your child in the near future. This is your father. This is a picture of him. And be honest with your child. If you don't know where the father is, just tell him. I don't know where your dad is in. But I will try to make attempts to find him or his family so you could be a part of the family. Yep. And, and somebody just said, you know, kids need structure. Yes, they need structure. And they ask what? <laughs> yeah, you're right now. You, nah, just, nah, just, it's good for that. But um, I will say this. I condone and i respect and i love my daughter-in-law no matter who she um decides to do in her future relationships because at the end of the day i've known her for almost 17 long years she's mm. been a wonderful teenager she matured and grew up into this mother and a wife and she takes very good care of those boys, even though my son is no longer here. And a lot of women say, oh, well, I do need the father to be there for my kids to try to give them that discipline. No, Najima, well, Najma, she has a um, very strong, um, firm voice when she talks, especially to my 13 year old and he listens and he goes to school every day. He does what he's supposed to do. So it's not all about just, oh, the mother need the dad. Mothers need to also take their authority as well, mm. especially like me. Mm. I had my son when I was 14, 18 mm. after my birthday. And Dang. my son, he, he went all the way through school. He was a straight A student in everything. But when he decided to let Nigel go back to school because they had my grandson at an early age, he said, you could go back to get your diploma first. Then mm. he went back and got his. But guess what? They graduated on time. Yeah. And they were 17 and 18 
when Come on, Ms. Linda. They were 17 and 18 when my grandson was born. So I'm not putting the burden, the full burden on mothers, but I am putting the burden on mothers too because us as women, we are the root and we are the, the foundation of the family because the first thing you say, oh, well, my grandmom this and my grandmom that, my grandmom carried the family and blah, 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 blah. Guess what? Your grandmom is that woman. She mm -hmm. the one that took the whole family under to make sure that they were okay. And that's another thing. A lot of families, they don't have their grandparents no more. So you can't live the um, the daily time, get up at 7 o'clock, be out for school at 8 o'clock. When you come in from school around 4 o'clock, you know you got to come in the house and wash your hands and do your homework, maybe eat your snack. And right. then at 6 o'clock, you eat your dinner. And then you can watch a little TV until it's time to take your bath at 7.30, 8 o'clock and be in the bed at 9. That's the structure mm. Naja has. And she is young. Yeah, well, now you got to stop calling me a king and grand rising and all that shit. I understand she's good Nadia, mom you better that. stop saying that. Yeah, man. tell her stop you saying grand rising went, to me. I, I don't play that shit. You told me once to don't say it no more, so I ain't saying it no more. You better stop yeah. saying it. You she hear keep me? talking some grand rising and all this shit. Ain't no grand rising. I'm woke. I'm up. I don't do no grand rising. I wake up. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a, um, I actually um took off the morning because, you know, I usually be working now. Um, to go? I only took off this morning because um, my godson, again, he didn't have his father. But look what I got out of him. Proud grandparent. Oh, graduation. Oh, godmom of a graduation. Oh, he did it's not. Graduation time. Yes. That's, what's up. Right. That's where I'm going to oh, now. And, right. my, and my thing is, if he could do it without his father, mm. and needless to say, and his mother. Mm. Mm. My godson, my oldest godson raised him, but his mother was there for him, but he lived with my godson, my oldest godson, all this long time. This boy is graduating today, and he has two jobs. No kids and a whole girlfriend. Damn, anybody, that's what's up. anybody can do it. It's Tell him congratulations. I sure yeah, will. Fuck Naja sure ass. Will. She keep playing. I'm a blocker. <laughs> Naja, Naja. Listen I'm a blocker. I don't listen. Baby. I ain't got no pics. I block my mother. I don't care about blocking no block. Yeah. Naja, listen. You better not. You hear me? Tell her. You it's better coming. not. It's coming. the end of the month. And, and excuse me, Ike, for saying this, but I have to say it this way. Naja, do not come on here saying grand rising, kings, or none of that crap. You come on here, you say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Or you know something to that nature. Don't you ain't making no pages. The, the phone, the um, you know Instagram tracks now how many pages you create, and then they gonna yeah. block you after a while, right? That's why I gotta be on my ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they gonna they gonna block you. So. So you um, better listen to mother-in-law now. Just stop playing. I'm telling you, you gonna see the finger come out. It's over. Yeah. Ain't, yeah. ain't no listen. Ain't no no no. It's not no, it's not grand, no grand day. Today grand day. Is it's Friday. Friday. Thank you, mother in law. Friday. Thank you, mother. Yes. And you get the applause, mother in law. January the 9th of 2023, and it's 9 37 a.m. Thank you. Friday. Yes. I will re I listen, you, I'd rather for you to say Friday. You know, they'd be like, yeah, happy Friday, but don't say no Green Rising and Kings. Yeah, don't say it. I'm telling them right now. She's saying she's done. It's over. <laughs> she got one more Green Rising, and then it's over. <laughs> Yeah, deal. you better not say it. You better not say it, because then I'm going to be on this live by myself, and you ain't going to be here. Me and Prince going to be on this live. Yeah, you'll you right. Like, Mother-in-law Prince, now you done. It's a done <laughs> deal. You, we cut you out. Mother-in-law, I definitely appreciate you tuning in. And once again, you sorry for the loss of your son who was murdered. I did post about it and everything like that. And it's so yes, crazy, because I, I was telling Najee, it was some girl, like, she sent me an inbox. Like, it was like 3 in the morning. When I seen the time, I'm like, oh, who the fuck? I'm reading it. She was trying to get me to post about your son saying that it was her cousin. Like, a day or two after it happened, I'm like, look, I said, I don't post nothing about nobody unless their family say it's okay. So I said, you know, you reach out to his mom, reach out to his sisters, whatever. I don't know. Mm. Whoever says it's fine. I kind of found out um, a couple months later, that's when I had met Naja, and she told me that was her mm -hmm. husband and everything. I explained the whole story to her and all that. She, I don't even think she knew who the girl was. And that's why I've been telling people, like, you got a lot of people who, 
whoever your son was, people know him, people love him. But you got people who want to post him on social media, oh, he died, whatever. They don't want justice. They just want his son to be seen on social media to him, oh, he died, this and that. Because they want views, they want likes and all that to go to their page. And that's one thing I don't do. So if you ever, I know they, uh, you know, I did put the picture up of the guy who was running for killing his son. It's on the page. Mm -hmm. And if you ever want to speak about it, you ever want me to do a story about it or whatever, just let me know whenever you have time, whenever you feel comfortable speaking about it. I give you the platform to speak about it because a lot of mothers are going through the same pain as you are. And you hold it, you're doing very well. Like, like I tell most of the moms, like you're doing good at the end of the day. I don't know what to say because like, I, don't, I never lost a child, nothing like that. But what I can say is that I can help you to get justice and I can pray for you and I can make sure that somebody else can get the lessons and whatever I can do to help spread the word about what happened to your son or anybody else's son, that's what I'm here for. Thank you. Um but yeah, if you want to do, it's okay if you want to hold a discussion with me about that. Um, because I could go on about that, but it's really no words that you can tell a mother, a father, or wife, or children. Like, you know, um, I just don't, when people say sorry for your loss to me, um, I say thank you, but I follow up with I didn't lose my son because his spirit is still here with me. My son mm. still come and he still talk to me. Um, even though my son was my only birth child, um, wow. my son is still here with me. And yes, I do be in a lot of pain and you know, I do cry and stuff like that because that's my only child. But right. at the end of the day, uh, me and my son held the conversation back when COVID started and he was saying mom is getting very tough out here and I was doing Uber and Lyft at the time on top of me working and he admitted to me he said it's getting so crazy out here he said I'd rather for you to stop doing Uber and Lyft because if anything happened to you I can't promise you what I'm gonna do mm. so he asked me to stop and I eventually stopped but he also had a very good spirit and he also was a loving person to everyone. Like my phone is so full of text messages and I'm quite sure Niger phone is full of text messages. People, a lot of people reached out to us. And at the end of the day, when me and my son had this conversation back in 2020, he said to me, this is the world we're living in today. People is just jealous for no reason. People starting arguments and getting killed for no reason and that's the truth yep. that's the truth but we could have another discussion on that um you know what you know about me and my son and you know life after you know my son's passing um because he's not physically here but he is still here and not only that I'm going to walk in his legacy. We all going to walk in his legacy. His children, his wife, you know, my mother, my sister, you know, all his friends still condone them. They still come out to our, you know, the events and stuff like that. So my thing is when a person back in the day used to get into an argument with somebody, it's either you fight or you call each other a bunch of them efforts right. or P-U-S-S-Ys and stuff like that and walk away now and this is the conversation me and my son had nowadays they want to either stab you up shoot you up or hit you with a car or throw you in the river or do something like that and that's not the life we should be living today so no. we definitely um can touch base on it and um i'm not gonna promise y'all next time i'm gonna be looking this nice because i sit at home <laughs> and work from home with a body on my head so, um, nah, that's cool. We're going to talk about you. We're going to definitely about talk about it. But listen, all of y'all have a wonderful day because I don't want to take up too much of ID time. Um, and I want everybody to be safe. I want all of y'all to pay attention to your surroundings and try to, I'm trying to find the right words again, try to find that connection even if you can't find that connection to try to co-parent with your other half mothers with the fathers fathers with the mothers because there's some single fathers out here too that i do know of that's taking care of the no children doubt. so try to find that connection and even if you can't find it um 
try to develop it with some a family member so that that way that child can at least know somebody and their other has family. I'd rather for them to know them than to not know them because when this child grows and they go to say. So I'd rather for them to know someone in their family because you can introduce your child to the brother or the uncle. The next right. thing you know is going to lead it to a cousin and an aunt and somebody else and somebody else. At least they know somebody in their other half's family. Yep. So swallow your pride, save the argument, save the attitude, and just do the best that you can do. Well, there you have it. Mother-in-law, now your mother-in-law. Listen. I used to do the segment. It was, I, I called it Children Are Dying and Mothers Are Crying. So I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to bring okay. that back. And whenever you're ready, uh, we can get you on and so you can talk more to the people. So I definitely appreciate you for tuning in. Please enjoy the graduation. Tell the young you're man. You're welcome. Yes, we say congratulations. We applaud I him will. for making it and all that. And we definitely Thank appreciate you. you. We're going to talk to you again soon, real, real soon. Yes, yeah, so and just let me know. Whenever you want to do, just let me know because I can take some time out from the... Um, from the um, me working and just um i used to i used to normally do it like on a tuesday night so i think i might bring it back on the tuesday nights i used to do it like on tuesday nights like around eight o'clock okay okay yeah well just i mean whenever i said um or you know or whatever works for you yeah it doesn't matter to me i, I work from home like my my supervisors they love me so i i whenever you know you ready i'm ready we'll figure it out no doubt yep. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank Please be you safe too. out here. We appreciate you. You too. You too. All of y'all. Y'all have a good day. And Naja, I will text you later, sweetheart. I love you. That was mother-in-law.